Today, we're hitting the beach and we're gonna try and catch every species there is there to go. catch. My name is Nick and today we're going fishing. So, covered in poison ivy, if you couldn't see that. It's all over the place. I have probably four hours of sleep. I was in bed like probably four hours ago. Uh, what else? I can't f hear a single thing out of my ears because my all my sinuses are clogged. And my nose is clogged, I can't breathe. And all these things were leading me to believe in one thing. There's never been a better time to go to the beach and catch some damn fish. So that's what we're gonna do, see ya. All right, we've made it. Let's go see how cold the water is. Not terrible, actually. I'm kind of used to cold water now. And you always, you want the water to be a bit warmer because of the fluke, like, warmer water. Well, let me show you what I'm using here. This is what we're gonna use today. The jerk shed on the jig head. Okay, so I'm throwing the it? Berkeley Gulp jerk Gulp shed on a quarter ounce jig head. Slide this has up. become super popular where I live thanks to a man named Roger from Cooking Bush. and Fishing. Roger is like the greatest food fisherman I know. I've met him a couple times in real life and he's really dialed in this technique. So I thank him for sharing all the knowledge with everyone. And basically when you fish this, this gulp jerk shed, you're casting it out there and then you're letting it sink near the bottom. And then once you know it's sunk towards the bottom, all you do is you jig it once or you could do a little pop pop and you want to make sure your line is tight once it's falling again so instead of the jig just going straight up and then down it's gonna go up and then it's gonna kind of fall like that so this i guess it kind of lets it stay in the strike zone of fluke for longer but if you want more in-depth stuff i highly suggest you go check out roger at cooking and fishing he's got courses too on this stuff it's crazy he's literally the fluke god i guess you could say oh there's a fish we already got one. It's a fluke, too. It didn't even hit the bottom yet. I literally didn't get to the bottom yet. Look at that. That's a good one, too. So get the tape. So they gotta be 18 to keep, but I'm not gonna keep them anyways, just because I don't have ice on me and I don't feel like it. Seventeen and a half, so it would have been a keeper last year, but still a nice one There you go not bad Again, I didn't even know he was on, because they always they keep biting in the fall. Little guy. So that fluke right there was just a little guy, but in a second you're gonna see that the gulp jerk shed does not only catch fluke. That's not a fluke. That ain't no fluke. It's probably a blue fish. Maybe a striper, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not a fluke. <laughs> oh gosh. You never know what you're gonna hook into. 
And this is this is only 10 pounds braid on 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. So we gotta we gotta be careful. I want it to be a big striper, but you know, odds are it's a bluefish. Actually, no, you know what? This is probably a striper. Just because of the way it's fighting. Like the the last time I caught one, it went all the way up shore. Yeah, it's a striper. Sick. Oh. It's not even that big of a fish. These guys are just so strong. There you go. Not bad. All right, let's get her back. Ah, that was sick, dude. I forgot to put the GoPro on my head for the release, but it's all right, you know what happened. That was just a little guy, not even worth measuring. Probably like, I don't know, 22 inches, 24 inches. Not really worth measuring, oh my gosh. You see that, you never know, you never know what you're gonna catch. Just wake up and go. So the dude to my right was hooked up and it looked like it was actually a pretty big yeah, fish. So I decided to get closer to him to try and get Sorry. to try and get in on the action, but that would kind of end up being a big mistake. Oh my god. That's a big fish. Ah. That was a big fish, dude. Oh my god. Wow. I think he actually came up too. Ah. I almost hooked myself. Whatever that was, was freaking huge, dude. He just bent my hook out. That's not good. Let's actually switch up to something a little beefier. Catch these big ass fish. Wow, look at that. So that's why you don't mess with bluefish on light tackle. They're the strongest fish by far on the surf. And they also have the hardest bite and like mouth bite strength I've ever seen. If you stuck a finger in there, you, you're not getting it back. If we landed that, that guy, we would have had the surf <laughs> slam, striper, bluefish, fish. and fluke. And I wanted to try and catch another bluefish, so I tied on a diamond jig to my beefier rod, and I started ripping it around, but I didn't get any bites. It's kind of how blue fishing goes. When you don't want to catch them, you catch them, and when you want to catch them, you don't catch them. At least for me, that's how it goes. So I switched back to the jerk shed to try and catch some fluke, but it ended up not working out the way I thought it would. I went a couple of hours without a bite, and I was, I was starting to lose hope. The tide was also going out, and historically, I don't do well in the low tide. I don't know why. It could just be a coincidence, but I've just not pulled out many fish during low tide. So things weren't looking too good, but I wouldn't let that stop me from trying. I drove all the way out here to fish, and I had faith in the jerk shed. There's a bite. There we go. Finally got a fish. This is a good one too. He ate it off the bottom. That's a good one. I don't 
think that's quite 18 though. Actually, yeah, that's gotta be 18. Yep, 18 and a half. Nice. That thing's gone, dude. You know, that's my fault. So we plucked a super nice fluke. On the surf, it's definitely possible to catch keepers. It's just not nearly as common as it would be offshore. But look at what he does here. This I've never had this happen before. So if you look, I'm, as I'm pulling him out of the water, it looks like he's hooked just right in the mouth like, like usual. But you know, I'm pulling him up on the shore and there's a lot of tension on the line keeping that, that hook pinned. But as soon as I let the tension go, that hook must have came out. And what happened was the fish must have noticed that and he just decided to swallow the, the bait. Like way down the goal he was and then he, he gut hooked himself i don't know how the hell that happens and i thought i did something wrong i thought I, usually i almost never gut hook fish using this this technique and you can see i i did everything the way i'm supposed to i felt the bite i was a little it was a little tick like that i was like oh and i reeled down to the fish the weight's there and then i just i set the hook across my body and that's exactly what you're supposed to do you shouldn't gut hook fish if you do it like that and that's why i was so confused i just i was trying to like think of what i did wrong let me know if you've seen that before where a fish swallows the bait after they've been pulled out of the water. I thought it was super weird. But we ended up getting the last laugh because this guy ended up being dinner. And stick around to the end where I'm flaying this guy up because we actually see what was in his stomach and it'll actually help us next time we go out. And plus I have something that I think you'll really like. Oh. There's a fish. I freaking tripped over my own leg hook setting that. That's why it took a second. Wow, that is tiny. Very small. See ya, bud. Look at him right there. No shot he eats again. So I pulled in that little guy right there. He came right in, like, in the exact same spot as the, the bigger guy. And sometimes this will happen with fluke. You'll kind of just notice that they're all going to be piled up in one area. So sometimes you could be doing everything right, but you're just not in the right spot. So that's why you always have to move on the beach. I covered multiple miles today. Just always be moving and you should get, uh, get yourself into some fish. And that little guy would be the last one of the day. It was a great day. It was just a little bit slow in, in the middle. But now we're going to fillet this guy. So as I fillet him, I want to tell you about something cool that I've been working on. I actually have my own fishing club. I don't know if you saw the last video, but we basically do tournaments. We just did our first one, actually. Congrats to Anas for winning. I kind of made the club because all of my local clubs are filled with old guys. I have nothing against old guys. It's just that I want to compete in tournaments that I wouldn't get smoked by old dudes. So I don't really care how old you are. I just don't want to get smoked by, and I don't want you to get smoked by older a lot older and experienced guys. There's dudes that have been fishing for triple the amount of time I've been on this planet. So I want to keep things a little bit fair, you know. It's called fishschool.com. It's hosted on school.com, S-K-O-O-L.com. And my club is $9 a month. This month, we're actually having a mini tournament. So from June 14th to June 30th, there's three ways to win. You could have the biggest fish, the most points, or the most species. And guess what? The beauty of it all is that it's not location specific. So we all don't have to show up to the same place to go fishing. And I think it's a great way for people across the world to come together and fish all the rules will be posted in the uh, the club page once you join i will also be hosting uh, one or two zoom calls a month now about anything fishing related we could vote on the topic beforehand and i'll throw together a little presentation or we could just do a q a or we could either even just chat about whatever we want so yeah if you want to go join that right, link down below in the description this. i can already feel my uh my gulp Ooh, look at that. I think this is a grass shrimp. 
So when I cut open this fluke stomach, we obviously, we had my, my jerk shad down there because he absolutely choked it. But I also found a little grass shrimp. And I thought this was really interesting because first of all, I've never really found one in a fluke stomach. But also Roger from Cooking and Fishing, his in his one of his recent videos, he said that the fluke were eating grass shrimp. And I just thought it was really cool. Now, one of my ideas was to buy the gulp shrimp. They actually have a shrimp imitation lure. I don't know if this is gonna work, but it would be worth a shot to try. So always, always, always cut open the stomachs of the fish that you catch you'd be surprised what you find in there i remember i cut open a, a lake trout stomach and i found a big blue go in there which is interesting because i didn't know they they ate them at all so but yeah no cooking on this one because i just want to keep it straight to the point unless you want to see cooking let me know i'm not a great chef if you want to see cooking comment below i'm sure i can make it happen but yeah that was a great day of saltwater fishing that's we're gonna do it all summer long because there's great opportunity out there on the surf trout fishing is gonna come back in the fall there's a lot of opportunity in the fall for trout fishing i i can't wait for that trout bust at the surface at my my local lake so i troll for them right under the surface and it's so much fun but for now we're gonna do the saltwater stuff and i can't wait to see you in the fishing club but that's all i got here now go catch some dang fish see ya